And I asked myself, like, is it because I don't believe it's possible? Like, what's is it because I don't actually want this? And every time I ask myself those questions, like, no, I can absolutely see the possibility of this. I know it's inevitable in my life. And also I do want it. So what the fuck is going on? And then it hit me. (laughs) And this is the common pitfall. Are you ready for this? If you could guarantee making your dream life your reality, what would that be worth to you? Welcome to the Manifestation Babe podcast, where we take topics like manifestation, the universal laws, quantum physics, personal growth, and spirituality, and turn them into simple, powerful, practical steps to apply in your life. I'm Katherine Zinkina, manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur who has generated over $25 million in just seven years. I am obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. There is no such thing as an unrealistic dream. And with the tools that I give you, don't be surprised when every area of your life receives a massive up level. Are you ready? Let's manifest. Hello, my beautiful babes, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Babe podcast. Today's episode is all about why you struggle to know what you want. And this is actually inspired by my own personal breakthrough that I had recently. I feel like I've really been letting you in on my own WTF moments, my own breakthroughs, my own struggles with the manifestation process recently. So this is kind of like a continuation of that, but also something that I have taught to my students before. And I just wanted to share with you like how certain things can come back up for us so that we can learn it on a deeper level. So this episode is inspired by a period recently where I got so insanely stressed out and so insanely triggered by what I want. And me coming into a visualization practice or sitting down to define my goals or sitting down to gain clarity on what I wanted my next version of life to look like, what life looks like for me three to five years down the line, what I found was that I was getting incredibly stressed out from the vision. I felt all the stress. I felt so much heaviness. I felt like my entire body contracted when I showed myself these scenes and when I showed myself living out these goals. And I thought to myself, this is so weird. And I know it's happened before to me because I have helped so many of my students gain clarity on what they want in the manifestation process. So what I'm talking about today, I've definitely gone through before, but I have it in a really long time, right? So I'm like, what is going on here? It's not that I think that this goal is impossible for me because it's been a really long time since I've struggled with, you know, possibility. And I definitely know it's possible. I definitely know that I'm capable of accomplishing this, but why is it feeling so heavy? (laughs) So being the investigator that I am, being the scientist, being the curious mind, I decided to dig in and figure out why. And it took me a couple weeks, but then finally one day it just hit me in the face like a rolling pin. Okay. And I wanted to share this very common mistake that I see amongst so many of my students that even I was still making, you know, a decade, almost two decades into this journey. So you are not alone, babe. If you're struggling, if you feel like your vision is murky, if you feel like you're having a hard time really defining and claiming what you want for your life, and it's bringing you immense stress and pressure and just an icky feeling, then this episode's for you. And I just want you to know that you're not alone. Now, before I share with you what the breakthrough is and before I get into how to overcome this very common pitfall, I wanted to share that I am actually hosting a free live training. It's a three-day live training called Cash Flow. It's all around money manifestation. And I haven't hosted, you guys, I haven't hosted a live training 
This is why I'm so excited about this. I haven't hosted a live training in over 18 months. So in over 18 months, I have not sat down live with you to share some content since it could be a little bit longer than 18 months. I was trying to figure out like, Did I do a live training when Orion was a newborn, when I was coming out of my maternity bubble? Did I do a live training in that launch? Because I remember there was a launch right after my maternity minute. I'm not going to call it a maternity leave because it was by no means long enough. I made that mistake. I'm not making that mistake for baby number two. And so I thought to myself, it's at least been 18 months. So cash flow is all about tapping into your ability to make money and experience that's filled with ease, that's filled with joy, that's filled with play, that's filled with pleasure. It's about learning what actually will make you incredibly wealthy and not just wealthy, but sustainably wealthy from an energetic standpoint, from learning the true energetics of money and how to avoid the most common pitfalls that are keeping you manifesting inconsistently and triggering this feast or famine mentality where some, you know, some months are up, some months are down. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. You're having a hard time really keeping it and holding on to it. And you're tired, you're sick and tired of that cycle. So in cash flow, I'm going to show you how to stop giving your power away to money because that is the most common reason why we struggle with money is because we're giving all of our personal power away to money. So I'm going to show you how to reclaim that power and how to reclaim your throne when it comes to money manifestation. So the link for this is going to be in the show notes, but also you can head to manifestationbabe.com slash cashflow. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash cashflow. It starts in just a couple weeks from you know the drop of this episode. I believe it's May 15th when we officially start. I'm so excited about it. And you guys know I live for my live trainings and I've missed them so much, but motherhood has kept me on a schedule where I've struggled to commit to a certain time and day to show up for, you know, live training. And now that I feel like I have my shit together and I have more of a schedule with my baby and a better understanding of what I can commit to, I'm so lit about this. Okay. So back to the topic. Here's what happened to me. I told you how I was feeling so much pressure, how I was feeling so much heaviness when deciding on what my next level of life looked like, right? What my ideal life looked like when I was imagining, I like to take myself out to a scene. So I like to take myself out to a singular scene that I know is a snapshot of me having everything that I want. This is how I simplify visualization. Sometimes I like to make it into like a movie event and I like to really get into it. And there's audios and music and all kinds of things that you can implement to really visualize what you want. For me now at this level, I like to think of a single screenshot. What is a single screenshot? Maybe it's like, you know, those live photos that you take on your phone where it's like three seconds of movement that if you push and hold on the photo, it's like three seconds of movement. What are my three seconds of movement that I'm seeing? So I put a little movement into it and I shift the dials around, you know, what is the distance at which I see this vision? Do I see it through my own eyes? Am I witnessing myself experiencing it? What am I seeing? What am I feeling? What am I knowing to be true? What am I hearing that tells me that I already have this vision. So that's the process that I like to take myself through. And typically it looks like an ideal day in my life. So maybe in this vision, it was like me on a yacht with my two kids and my husband, right? And I just like know that everything I want has been accomplished by this point. It's like three to five years down the line, or maybe I'm seeing a snapshot of me in my kitchen, three to five years from now with my two kids and the way my house looks and just like the way the kitchen looks, I know that I've reached everything that I want. Maybe it's a phone call I'm getting from someone telling me that I sold this amount of books or I sold this amount of courses or we hit this amount of money in a launch. That is a snapshot that I'm working with. Okay. So that's typically what I work with. And so in this instance, I was imagining myself three to five years down the line and all of a sudden I felt this contraction in my body. 
And I asked myself, like, is it because I don't believe it's possible? Like, what's, is it because I don't actually want this? And every time I ask myself those questions, like, no, I can absolutely see the possibility of this. I know it's inevitable in my life. And also I do want it. So what the fuck is going on? And then it hit me. (laughs) And this is the common pitfall. Are you ready for this? Okay. In claiming what I wanted, I simultaneously projected what I thought it would take to get there. And in this case, the projection that I projected onto this vision of the how and what I think it took to get there was not empowering and nothing about it was anything that I wanted. So this is a sneaky way of how I got attached to the how. And we know I mean, this has been something that every manifestation teacher out there has been repeating like a parrot by this point. The how is not your job. Don't get attached to the how. And I know that. But yet this was a very sneaky way of how it was coming about. I was projecting what I thought it would take to get there onto the vision, making it something that felt very off to me. And that's where all the heaviness came from. So Upon imagining this goal, right, this ideal day in my life, upon this this vision that I captured for myself, I remember looking at it and and witnessing, because I wasn't aware of this at first, but I want you to open up your awareness. Next time you visualize something and you feel the similar feelings that I felt, I want you to just notice and become like put a laser focus on the thoughts that you are having around this vision and notice that, and this is what I noticed about myself. I remember thinking, well, it's going to take a lot of work to get here. Damn, that looks like a huge life. How much does that cost? Can I maintain that? Can I really pay that much money for that mortgage? That looks like an $80,000 a month mortgage. (laughs) Can I really sustain that? Oh my God, that's, you know, I'm already kind of tired with one kid. If I have that many kids, I'm going to be so exhausted and I really don't want to be exhausted. Oof. Or shoot. How big is my team at that point? Ah, That feels like a lot to keep track of. Or God, I'm already paying so much in taxes. The tax bill must be really high in this vision, right? Like you can go on and on and on and on about this. And something else that was coming up for me was like, wow, if my social media is that big, if my impact really is that big. If people really are affected by my work to that degree and that level that I have such a large audience, I must have spent a lot of time on social media. And where I am right now, I just don't feel like spending that much time on there right now. Like, oof. You know, you can see how this starts to dampen the vision. You start to feel heaviness like, oh no, do I really want that? Or, wow, a New York Times bestselling book. Damn, that must have taken a lot of work, right? I must be really stressed out by that point. I know so many of my friends who have written books and God, it sounds like such a grueling process. And if I accomplished that, I must have gone through this grueling process. But you guys, here's the thing. This is what cleared everything out of the way for me. Okay, this is what cleared everything out of the way for me. Claiming what you want and getting what you want in life means getting what you want, okay? Not in the way that you don't want it, not in a way that feels exhausting, not in a way that feels tiring, not in a way that feels unsustainable, not in a way that feels like you have to make sacrifices. All of these sacrifices that you really don't want to make to get there. Like maybe you have a tight knit family and I know that I want to spend as much time with my kids as possible. I want to be the most present mom possible. But if I'm projecting this assumption that me getting to that level meant not spending enough time with my kids, of course it's going to feel heavy. Of course, at the end of the day, I'm going to be like, oh shoot, I don't think I actually want that. But in manifestation, you guys, you get what you want on all levels every single level gets to be exactly what it is that you want. And here's the mistake that I was making. I was projecting my idea, my assumption, my wrong assumption of what I thought it would take to get there. Okay. And this is why it's so important for you to 
not just claim what you want, but in the first step of the manifestation process that I've edited a little bit, my most recent process is not just to claim what you want, but also how you want it to feel. Because of course we can get what we want in a very stressed out manner. We can get what we want by working really hard. Of course, you can get what you want in any way, shape or form, but I want you to define how it felt to get what you want as well. And getting clear on how you want it to feel really protects the unfoldment of you receiving what it is that you want. Because in the end, I want this vision to feel as playful and easy and just automatic and second nature. And I just want it to feel natural to me. So of course, by defining that and getting clarity on that as well, I'm protecting the unfoldment of it unfolding in the exact way that I want it to unfold. Does that make sense? Now, this isn't to say, of course, where we're creating this rainbows and butterflies world where you're never going to bump into any sort of challenge or any sort of obstacle along the way to your journey, to your destination, or I don't really believe in destinations in life. I feel like these are just checkpoints. Like in three to five years, it's not like you're going to say, oh, I made it. I'm done. Like I can just, you know, leave the planet now. Of course, life is going to keep going. And so at this checkpoint of life where you receive and achieve everything that you want up until that point, you're going to bump into challenges and obstacles along the way. You know why? This is actually a really good thing. This is actually something that you want to happen. Because part of you receiving what you want is also the evolution of who you're going to become on the way there. And the version of you right now cannot handle that vision. She doesn't have the skill set. She doesn't have the mentality. She doesn't have the patience. She doesn't have what it takes to handle and sustain that vision. You know why I know that? Because if you did, you would have already been there. But because you're not, there's a growing period. There's an evolution. Okay. So these bumps and challenges along the way are going to help you grow into the version of yourself that when you get there, you can actually handle it. You can actually sustain it. This is something that gets to be a permanent experience for you. You're not just going to, you know, like win the lottery and then lose it all the next year. This is something where we are really looking after sustainable manifestations, manifestations that you keep, that you hold on to, that you feel comfortable with, that feels familiar to your nervous system so that you're not looking at them and perceiving them as a threat to your subconscious mind. Because that's when we repel it. That's when we sabotage it. That's when we get really, really close or get what we want. And then all of a sudden it just goes away, right? But it doesn't have to be. Now, in spite of the challenges and obstacles, I'm not saying that you have to struggle, that it's going to be some exhausting, some tiresome, heavy, grueling journey on the way there to get there. Now, of course, if you want it to be that way, be my guest. But I want to ask you these questions. This is what's going to help you just eliminate that exhaustion, that heaviness, that tension that you might feel when it comes to defining what you want. Okay. What assumptions are you projecting? Are you projecting your assumptions and your ideas about how the journey will look like? what it's going to take to get there, what sacrifices that you'll have to make to get there, what it means to get there, what it took others to get there. Maybe you know a friend who is where you want to be in terms of like the external, but you know that she almost died getting there, right? And you're probably like, ugh, but I don't, I don't think I want that anymore. No, it doesn't have to look like her journey. It doesn't have to look like their journey, his journey, whosoever journey it is. Maybe you're projecting what society believes that it's going to take to get there. Society has some really fucked up beliefs. I would not recommend using society as a blueprint to do fucking anything in life. (laughs) If you look statistically, the majority of people, they're broke, right? They're unhappy. I don't want you to ever look at society and be like, oh, this is the blueprint for how to get to where I want to go. Uh uh. Please don't fucking do that. Maybe you're projecting your own past. Maybe you've struggled to create a six figure business and it's been a lot of hard work and it's been a lot of suffering for you. 
you've been doing it in a way that doesn't feel good and aligned for you. And so your idea of creating multiple six figures or even seven figures, of course, you're going to automatically project and assume that it's only going to take even more sacrifice and even more struggle and even more hard work. No, getting what you want means getting what you want. Okay, period. This is how you're getting into the how. This is how you're getting in the way of the universes or sources or God's job, whomever you believe in, okay? So in claiming of what you desire for your life, you have to also trust that the version of yourself that you will grow into will be the version of yourself for whom the journey felt natural for for whom the journey felt second nature for and almost automatic for, okay? I just want you to remember that there's a version of you already, okay, who exists right now because the moment you have a thought, the moment you project a vision, the moment you claim what you want, there's actually already a version of you out there who's already living it. And so there's a version of you on a different timeline in a parallel universe who's already living it, just the way that you want it, not in the way you don't want it, the way that you want it, and in a way that you want it. And to access her is to simply believe that you already are her. She's already within you. You're already on the path there. And it's just a matter of you aligning and magnetizing that life to you, period. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you a ton of clarity. I hope it kind of separated, you know, your vision versus what you think it'll take to get there and understand that what you think it'll take to get there doesn't even matter. It's not something to worry about in the manifestation process. It is not part of the manifestation process. It is not important to the manifestation process. It's understanding that your journey is going to unfold in the way that you want it, in a way that feels second nature and automatic to who you're going to become in the process. And life is going to give you exactly what it is that you need to become who you're meant to become. That's not something you need to orchestrate. All you need to orchestrate is what you want and how you want it to feel. I hope this released some tension for you. I hope this helped you relax. Let me know how you love this episode. Don't forget to please, please, please take a quick moment to rate my podcast as it helps me so much. You have no idea. And not only reaching a bigger audience, but just building this beautiful community as well. And it really keeps me going. It motivates me to create more episodes. I love hearing from you. And I so, so appreciate you for listening and doing that. And I will see you inside of my cash flow training. If you haven't already signed up, you can sign up for that at manifestationpave.com slash cash flow. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. If you loved what you heard today, it would mean the world to me if you took a moment to rate, review, and share this podcast with someone that you think would benefit too. Sharing the podcast is the best way to help it grow and create a powerful community to join you on your manifestation journey. In the meantime, come hang out with me on Instagram at my handle at Manifestation Babe or sign up for one of my next manifestation courses or offerings at manifestationbabe.com.